Hello everyone. I am delighted to be here with you and to with my sister, wife, friend, writer, <laughs> all of that stuff. And y'all know her, Sean Corn. And we're we're just here for a few moments to tell you and to hopefully invite you into the depth of this journey we're in called Race in America, right? And um, Race in America we've done over the past two years as this event where we gather um, not just yoga teachers and yoga professionals but really um, anyone right and particularly folks that are in um, uh, professional work in the caring professions and uh, but it's really for anyone. It really is for anyone. And we we've, we've taken folks on a journey to Alabama, and uh, there been into this deep immersive inquiry with some brilliant folks who um, have taken us in the depth of this journey of the construct of race in America and how it shows up in systems, in culture, in, in so many ways, in so many ways. And so this year, given the circumstance we're in and this, this liminal space that, that we're in, in this present moment, we're bringing this online, right? So this year, 2020, is the first year of Race in America Online. And uh, we want to invite you into this journey with us. We want to invite you. The beautiful part about this is that we're now able to invite more people into, um, in, into the experience with us. And we've been able to structure it a, a little bit differently, right? This one really does look at it from a, a somatic express, uh, uh, through a somatic lens, right? Through a somatic arc, right? The arc of somatic wounding and resilience. One of the phrases we've used, and particularly in my work, I've used forever, is the issues live in our tissues. And somatic wounding, someone asked me, what does that mean, somatic wounding? And if you think about it, it means the issues live in our tissues. But we're looking at this from this lens of culture, from this lens of systems, from this lens of for real, for real, what deeply lives in our tissues. Sean, take it away. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, when Nikki and I started talking about this a couple of years ago, at that point, you and I had been involved in doing service work, not just nationally, but internationally. And I think we started to go up against some of our own um, just biases and prejudices and limiting beliefs and really unpacking in ourselves, what does it mean to be in service? And starting to go into a deep dive of learning and listening about, the, uh, about our own complicity when we don't understand systems of oppression. And you and I, of course, would be in dialogue about this because your lived experience is one in oppression. My lived experience is one of white supremacy and dominance. And suddenly, I remember we were both like, oh, we gotta slow this train down. We can't bring people into the field and teach them how to be in service before we understand the ways in which we're actually complicit to the oppression of others, the way it lives in our bodies and the impulse that it has when we don't understand individual as well as collective and historical and ancestral trauma. So you and I started doing some deep learning and listening, learning about the real American history and having two different experiences of it. As a white person, my experience of the real American history was fraught with ignorance. It was fraught with misinformation. And my body had to go through a process of guilt and shame and confusion and rage and anger. Your body had a very different experience. Ooh. And so the intention was to bring people into this experience. You and I weren't going out there and we're not teaching people necessarily about the real American history. 
but we were smart enough to hire educators, um, activists, artists, um, historians, folks uh, who are deeply steeped because of their own lived experience, because of the, the, the color of their skin, because of their own ancestral trauma, who are better informed to speak about these themes um, than certainly me. And, um, and you and I got to lean back and go through our own process of yeah. what race in America means. Yeah. What was enslavement? What was it like to be a part of these, the culture of oppression and the culture of dominance? And I can tell you, everyone who's, who's listening, my, unders, my life changed because of these trips and because of the leadership that we brought on to teach us. My relationship with my body was transformed. My relationship to, to the bodies of others, including Nikki, was radically transformed because I got to bear witness to her experience um, as we both heard information through a different con construct. Uh, I, out of all the work that I do personally, race in America, this, whether it's live or um, online, is the most challenging, the most confrontational, both as a student and as a teacher. It is the most essential, um, especially with everything that's going on in the world. I will speak to my white identified folks out there we must, at this time in our nation, get more informed through a somatic, psychological lens, yes. the impact that race in America has had on all beings. And if we want to be impactful in the work that we do in the world, our commitment must be to first pull back the veils of our own illusion, uh, let excavate the emotions, the denial, the biases and the prejudices that live within these bodies and work actively to dismantle these systems of oppression within ourselves so that we can actually dismantle the systems of oppression that exist within our world. Um, therefore, this work is for everybody, all bodies, all ages, all races, all ethnicity, all belief systems. Um, it is utilizing the practices of yoga, to Nikki's point, to ground, to center, to self-regulate, to feel, to be more vulnerable so that we can show up and be more effective in our learning, in our listening, and in our work in the world. And for those of you who do come at this from a, 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 a perspective of yoga and yoga philosophy, we do deeply ground this in yoga, right? We deeply ground this in the yogic view of, of race and racism, right? And justice and liberation and all of those things, right? And we, because now of our online format, it allows us to deepen that conversation as well as using trauma as this through line through everything that's going on. The trauma that lives in white bodies, the trauma that lives in black bodies, the trauma that lives culturally just because of the hierarchy and the way that things are set up in the culture that we're living in, in America, race in America. This is, I would assert, a, a particularly important inquiry and immersion right now, in this moment, in this moment, right, that we're in right now. Um, when we get at this, at the depth of what's held in our bodies, the possibility for opening, the possibility for, um, to create something new from our place of, of you know, bolstering our own resilience and to create something different, right? After this excavation, right? Tapping into our own resilience to find what real liberation looks like for all of us, for all of us. And so, and, and that's the hope of, of this immersion. I'm very excited now that it's online, 
I'm going to miss, uh, there, there's certain, of course, pieces about it um, because it's this virtual format versus our in-person format, right? But I can see that this offers uh, a way to touch in to even a, a level of depth that our previous two in-person ones didn't quite have the, the area to touch into. So I'm really excited about that. And we've got some amazing folks working with us in, in this. So for those of you who know Resma Minicum, which if you don't, please do learn quick. The book is My Grandmother's Hand. And um, Resma's with us. Sean and I have already done an interview with Resma, and I can tell you the depth. One of the things that was most interesting about this, and, and I love this, the, the, the whole idea of this, is we're going to invite anyone who, who's going to take this journey with us to watch bodies, right? Watch Sean's body as she's in this conversation, mm -hmm. right? And then watch my body as I'm in the conversation with Resma. And then a little later on in the week, we have uh, Christian P Picciolini. Yeah, yeah. And Christian is the author of the book, Life After Hate, right? He's a, a person whose organization um, is, is all about the work of de-radicalizing de-radicalizing folks who have been radicalized in neo-Nazism and, and just grown through this system. And watch my body, right, when we're in this conversation. So a lot of this, the work that we're doing, has this somatic emphasis. It has this whole idea of somatic em emphasis. And, you know, hopefully this stuff shows up in a way in these inquiries that we're in that really can shift how we show up in the world and how we show up for each other. Right? We're also, we're also gonna have Michelle Johnson, um, yes. who's gonna be teaching us the, 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 the arc uh, from enslavement to civil rights to the progressive movements of the day. And she'll also take us through um, some ex, um, some embodied experiencing as well, meditation, I imagine, and, and reflection to help us to really look and understand the impact that our history has had on all of us in various ways. We'll also have a Freya who yeah. I, I can't even begin to describe as an artist how brilliant she is bringing to life uh, the experience of... Um, of uh, enslavement um, and uh, oppression. And uh, who, who else, Nikki, are we having? Emmanuel, who's been with us <laughs> on each and every one of these trips. His poetry is amazing. He's the author of a new book called Our Time, His, it, My Time Will Come, right? And, and um, so Ian will be with us. We will also have um, James Fox is going to be there to speak about the, the work of the Prison Yoga Project. We've got um, Vivette Jeffries, Logan Jeffries, who I can't wait to hear. Her, her, she's going to talk to us really on our real first day with Resma bringing in the whole idea, again, of how this all started, right? We're, we start out with this whole idea the somatic arc and she brings in this per perspective from settler colonization right as 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 an indigenous person from uh in the united states so that arc that part of the arc will be there as well eji the equal justice institute is is uh, uh will be doing a presentation here as well and others there there are others Right, so uh, I am so excited. We're gonna have um, breakout groups. So there'll be caucus group for white bodies, caucus groups for, for BIPOC, BIPOC folks. We have, so our mornings are set up as really lecture kind of information. 
and the afternoons are, are set up as the depth of process work. So this is for real work. This is the, the real deal as far as the, the level of work that, that uh, is being offered in this. So um, we just can't. And, and Nikki will be teaching specifically to BIPOC folks. I will be teaching to white bodied folks because of our own lived experience. There's certain things that we can speak to that um, it wouldn't be appropriate for me perhaps to speak about the oppression of black bodies when that's not my lived experience. But what is my lived experience is understanding white bodied supremacy and the impact that that has on white bodies. But with that said, anybody can take any class and actually we recommend it. It would be interesting for people to be able to hear and understand the different challenges and the way trauma lives in bodies and the impact that that has. But we will also be teaching skills for self-regulation. For those of you who do go into perhaps my room and I'm using languaging that can be activating or triggering, we're gonna be making sure that there is space and conversation and context so that everyone can um, approach these conversations uh, bravely, but with skills for self-regulation and grounding. Yeah, this is the work. I, I will assert, right, that, that this is the kind of work that our collective liberation depends on, right? And that was the, the whole intent of the offering, right? To get at this level where it's not just conversation, right? It's not just the stuff that's coming out of our mouth. It's not even things that live in the domain of mind. It is this integration, right, at a deep, deep level. What lives in our bodies, right? How this all works. And this is the kind of work that, that I would assert, we assert, that our collective liberation depends on, right? Liberation for all of us, all of us. And at this point in time in history, in this liminal space that we're in, in this very moment, right? I want to invite you here from the bottom of my being because we're going to need this as we go forward. I don't care how things turn out and boy, go vote, right? <laughs> Take care of that. Take care of that business. And no matter which way it turns out, we're going to need the depth of the experience like the one that's being offered here in order for us to move forward toward our collective liberation. So, yep. so join us. Uh, what are the dates, Nikki? October 20th. 25th through the 30th, right? So right before the elections. This will be a great place just to get centered uh, before we got to go vote. And you can find out the information by going to um, offthematintotheworld.org. Um, you can also, it's on your website also, Nikki? Yeah, I'm sure it is. There are a ton of places where it's satya at satyaretreats.com. Mm -hmm. So you can find out a ton of information. Please come join us. Please. Yeah. Yeah, we look forward to sharing this experience with you. We look forward to learning more from these incredible leaders and speakers. Um, I'm very grateful to you, Nikki, to be in partnership in this way. Uh, it, truly, it's an honor to be able to um, co-create and allow this to be an offering that I'm hopeful will be in service to a lot of people going forward. So thank you everyone so much and hopefully we will see you virtually October 25th. Love Bye. you all. Bye.